Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 309. Inspiring journeys of today's most successful entrepreneurs, seven days a week. Fire Nation, you were born to do one amazing thing, but how do you identify what it is? Grab a free hard copy of Steve Olsher's highly anticipated new book, What Is Your What? Discover the one amazing thing you were born to do at whatisyourwhat.com. That's whatisyourwhat.com. Whether your business needs a logo, web, apparel, or mobile app design, 99designs has you covered. Visit 99designs.com slash fire to be connected with thousands of designers who are ready to work on your next project right now. That's 99designs.com slash fire. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Taro Fukuyama. Taro, are you prepared to ignite? Yes. <laughs> All right. Taro is the CEO and founder of AnyPerk.com. AnyPerk provides employee perks in fitness, entertainment, travel, team building, and much more. They have currently signed up over 2,500 clients, including Pandora, Pinterest, and Hulu, and 250 partners, including Equinox, AMC, Verizon, and AT&T, by providing awesome perks. Given Fire Nation just a little overview, Tara, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you. And then tell us about AnyPerk. Sure. My name is Tara Fukuyama. I'm CEO at AnyPerk.com. I'm originally from Tokyo. I came to San Francisco to start a company two years ago. And I got into Y Combinator as a first Japanese entrepreneur in YC. Wow. And started AnyPerk. And it's been already one and a half years. So very excited to run this company here. Well, we're excited to delve way more into any perk and your entire journey in general. But Taro, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire off with a success quote. It gets that motivational ball rolling. It gets people pumped up for this great content you're going to be sharing with us. So take it away. Sure. So my like best quote that I learned for my you know, entrepreneurship is a sell before you build it. Sell before you build it. So early stage, you don't have any like enough resource. Like you can't, you have only yourself or you have only your founders. But you got like millions of things that you want to do in the future. So what I learned from my success, I don't know if it's success, but what what I'm learned from my experience is that you have to make sure what you're building is gonna be something that people are gonna you know use or people are gonna pay money for it. And once you make sure you actually build it, and this way you can make something that people are actually gonna use it and want it. So that's what I learned from my experience. Very cool, Taro. And I will say, we've had Mr. Lean Startup himself, Eric Reese, on Entrepreneur on Fire. It was a great interview. He talks so eloquently about getting that minimally viable product out there as soon as possible. Get it out there even before it's ready to sell. Just get that idea out there and start getting feedback and start really making that happen. Dane Maxwell, Andy Drish of The Foundation, they talk so highly and so clearly about that as well. It's just so inspiring to see that kind of vibe this out there to really make sure you're getting your ducks in a row before you spend all this time, all this effort, and potentially all this money into a product that nobody may end up even wanting. So take it down to the ground level, Tara. When have you actually sold a product before you created it? Yeah, I actually, I 100% agree with like Eric Reese's idea to make a you know minimum buyer product really first. But my advice is like even before you make the you know minimum buyer product, you can actually sell it. That means for us, we, so once you get in Y Combinator, actually you can access a lot of discounts just because you're like Y, y Combinator founders. Right. You can access a lot of gym discount, a lot of like, you know, AWS discount or like a lot of web service discount. So what I did was I, you know, copied all the list on Google Docs and shared to non-YC companies and saying that, hey, this is a list that I would be able to sell, you know, in the next few months. Would you be you know, you'd be willing to pay money for this. And people are like, yeah, I'd love to pay, you know, 10 bucks or 20 bucks for this. I was like, okay, this is something that we can build and we can, you know, actually make a business out of it. So we actually, you know, started selling even before we made it. We actually just, you know, copied or we just, you know, faked it before we actually took time to, you know, build it. So that's how we actually did two years ago. 
So Taro, take us back in your journey because Entrepreneur on Fire, it's about your journey. You're our spotlighted entrepreneur. We really want to hear about your life in general. So I want to go back to that time that you decided, you know what? I am going to apply to Y Combinator. Talk to us about the events that led up to that, where you were in the world, and then talk to us about the application process. Sure. So 2011 uh, spring, I partnered with my co-founder, Sunny, who is a co-founder right now. And we were in Tokyo at the time. But we realized that, you know, when you want to build a big thing, you should be in Silicon Valley. That's when we decided to come to San Francisco and Silicon Valley without any idea, without any better product. We met like more than 100 of investors. Uh, we thought like we could raise any money by reading, you know, TechCrunch and everything if you come to San Francisco. <laughs> which was not true, so we didn't, couldn't raise any money. So we were running out of my visa, so we had to go back to Tokyo. Last day, we went to a conference called TechCrunch Disrupt. Usually, you have to pay thousands of money to get in, but I had no money, so I was like, hey, I'm an interpreter, interpreter from Japan, so you know, I'm going to translate all the Japanese startups, so can I get in for free? And they let me in for free. And that's actually where I met Paul Graham, who is a founder of Y Combinator. He was uh, giving a session on the stage, and after that, he was walking on the you know, path. So I went there with my iPad saying, hey, this is what I'm building right now. Would you invest in us? And he was like, oh, you guys are interested. And, but why are you not doing that in Japan? You know, you, Japan is a huge market. You can just do it there. But I was like, no, I just read your blog, and you told me that if you want to do big things, you have to come to you know, Silicon Valley and San Francisco. So I came you know, because of your advice. And he was like, oh, you guys are so, you know, interesting. You should, you know, come up with Y Combinator. And he introduced me other partners. That's the day that we kind of thought, oh, you know, it's realistic that we can maybe get into Y Combinator. Before then, we didn't know that, you know, there's no Japanese entrepreneur in YC. So we it's really impossible to get into YC. So we didn't even apply for it. So that's kind of the day that, you know, changed everything. We thought it's real that we can probably maybe get into Y Combinator. That's the day when we apply. And three months later, we got in Y Combinator. Wow. See, I love that story for so many reasons. But something I really want to pick out of that is that you just use the skills that you already had. And I think that's so valuable for the listeners. Every <laughs> single listener right now, they have a certain skill set, whatever that may be. For Taro, it just happened to be that he spoke Japanese in a country where not a ton of people spoke Japanese and not a ton of people at this conference. So this conference that was sold out, there was thousands of dollars to get in. He got free access and close access to the stage because he offered his skills, which happened to be translation. So that's just an inspiring story of an entrepreneur that's just making things happen and look what's come. Taro, let's fast forward now. Take us to day one of Y Combinator. You walked in with your co-founder, we want to be there with you. Sure. So we got into Y Combinator, you know, I'll, there are like six partners there. There are like more than 200 entrepreneurs and founders are there. We were so excited to be there. We thought, you know, once you get in Y Combinator, you can raise any money and you can <laughs> make success. No, I seriously thought about it. Well, first you thought just coming to San Francisco or Silicon Valley, you'd be able to raise money. And then you thought just getting into Y Combinator. So you're getting reality slapped over and over again. But again, it's the journey of an entrepreneur. You're learning through it. So continue. Yeah. So, so I was so excited and we are very confident because, you know, we, oh, we are now in YC. So we are the awesome founders, something like that. <laughs> At the time, we had been working on the first idea for like six months already. And that was not the same idea as any book, actually. It was a dating site at the time. Okay. And we are confident that this will be something that will change the you know, world very soon. And so we got in Y Commander. We had a chat with a YC partner. It's called Office Hour. That They give you like a lot of advice of what you should do in the next week or so. And we show all the numbers. We show all the growth in the last six months. And the YC partner's reaction was not what we were expecting. That he was like, oh, you, you guys you know, you guys' service is not growing. Why you keep doing this? Like, we, we thought it, it was not growing, but, like, somehow if you start a company, you really get drunk with your, your idea and you really believe that you're going to change the world. But the reality is, like, you know, most of the time, your product is not growing, right? And YC Partner is the best place that they will get you to the real, that they will tell you, okay, you guys should stop doing this because you're not growing, obviously. 
I don't want to dive too far into this particular question I'm about to ask you, but what was your unique selling proposition within this dating site? What did you think was really going to make it work? To be honest, if I think right now, I don't think there's any you know, great point of the service. There was a dating site through mutual introduction. That means I love making introductions. So what I found was, you know, making introduction was not that easy. So what I did was, you know, check in Facebook. You can see friends of friends there. You can ask for introduction. It's really optimized there. So it's easy and fast or something like that. So during these office hours, Taro, they pretty much told you, listen, your growth is stagnant. Your idea is not taking off. It's not going, quote unquote, viral. Let's right. just stop now and let's move in a different direction. What happened then? Usually, like a lot of other investors told me that, you know, our app is gr- not growing, but we believe that tomorrow maybe we'll start growing. You know, next month we'll start growing. But in YC, in the three months later, you'll have a event called Demo Day that there will be more than 500 investors there and you have to present with all the other, you know, same, you know, startups in the same batch and you have to compete each other to get money for the fundraising. And all you need at the demo day is you need to show the growth of the, you know, hockey stick growth, right? But right now, you know, the first day we realized that, oh, this is not growing and YC partner told us that, hey, three months later, I'm going to be really growing. And to be honest, we are not, confident with that. So we are like, all right, it's not working. Let's start something else. So that's actually the day that we kind of changed the idea. So take us to that next idea then. We want to be there for that brainstorming process that you had with your co-founder. And then what was that next big step you took? Sure. So actually in the first month, we changed the idea seven times. Wow. Okay. And to change idea, there are two ways. One is change your product or change your vision. Uh, we didn't want to change our vision to make introduction easier first. So we tried to uh, try several ideas that will be you know, related to introductions, but none of them were not working. So we decided, okay, it's time to change the vision. Maybe introduction is already okay there, so we should do something else. And that's a really tough life that we tried to do something translation because we were just from Japan. We tried to do like movie chat. I don't know why it came out, like blah, blah, blah. So first month we tried with the seventh ideas and none of them actually working. Take us through, Taro, each one of those different ideas. First one was the introduction to investors. So VC get a lot of introduction. Entrepreneur want to get introduction to VC, but there's no w- good way to optimize that. So we're just making a button that, you know, you can ask for introduction, you know. They can optimize it. So I pitched to Ron Conway about this because YC introduced me to them because they'll, he'll be the best you know, potential customer. Right. But Ron Conway was like, oh, I like this idea, but I don't know if I'm going to you know, actually use this every day. Right. So I was like, okay, it's not going to work. Um, change the next idea. So that was first idea. We tried to work on a real-time translation app. That means Google translation is okay, but the quality is low. But if you ask for the actual translator, that's going to be so slow. So we thought if we could build really fast, bad, uh, really accurate translation service, then that could be the you know, next game changer. So what we did was like, since I could speak both language, we make like something like Google Doc and you type English and I see from back and I type manually and translate it English. It was not scalable at all, so we switched our ideas. Wow. So let's just fast forward now to your actual idea that you finally settled upon, which was any perk. Take us to how that idea actually came and then the actions that you took. Yeah. So there's several reasons, but the first idea was that, as I mentioned, uh, there's a Y Combinator list. That means if you get in Y Combinator, you can access a lot of discounts like, you know, web servers, web service, gym membership, you know, everything like that. We really loved it. So we thought, okay, this could be something that, you know, uh, they can be business. And we showed the list of the YC list to non-YC companies. And people were like, oh, I wanna, I'd love to pay $10 or 20 bucks to just access to these lists. So I was like, okay, this could be something that really can be business. And we remember that in Japan where we grew up, there are two to four public companies doing this business model, employee perks. And they're making more than $300, $400 million every year. But in the U.S., there is no public company at the moment. So we thought, okay, this is something that we could learn from the Japanese, you know, popular business model. And we could bring that to the U.S. that no one has ever done. So that's how we started on February 1st, 2011. 
So Taro, February 1st, this is the idea you settle on. Walk us through the steps that you took so that you were ready for demo day. Demo day was end of March, and we came up this idea on February 1st. And we started building during the February, and we, lo- we launched in March 1st. We emailed everybody about like, hey, this is a new service, this is a new service. We did everything to get the user, and we showed the growth that we got around 1,000 of companies on board by demo day as an initial reaction. That's actually how we showed on the first demo day in YC. So bring us to that stage. You're up there. You're presenting in front of 500 potential investors. Share with us what happened that day. We're so excited and we finally showed actual growth and we know the market is there because Japanese companies are making so much money in, you know, non-US country. And like investors are like really sold to our vision and we actually even met the investor who said no when we came to San Francisco at first and... They're like, all right, you guys are awesome. Can I invest in you? Like some investment uh, was fixed even on the day, same day. They gave us the check on the same day. You know, we are presenting. We are very excited for the future at the moment. Taro, you have investment in your hand. You're moving forward. Take us to a failure that you've had at some point with any perks, something that you just really ran into a wall against, a major challenge that you had to dig deep to overcome. And then share with us how you overcame that challenge. Yeah. So after we launched, we thought, you know, if you make something awesome, then a lot of customers will come to, uh, come to us, you know, without doing anything. Just like Facebook, you know, Facebook is awesome. So I'll just come back to Facebook every day. Right. So I thought that will happen to our product as well. So for, for the first few weeks, we were just waiting, you know, sitting in front of PC. But actually, none of the users are coming back and none of the users are signed up, you know, for the days. We were like, oh, what's going on here? And we just realized that, you know, no one is going to care about your product until you make something really, really awesome, right? So we d- realized that, okay, we cannot just sit on, on in front of PC. We should do something to talk to users and, you know, sell to users. There is a chicken and egg problems as well. Until you have the great product, you know, no customers will sign up. But for our product, if you don't have any customers, you cannot negotiate the vendors. That means, you know, you cannot get any perk. Of course. You cannot talk to AT&T saying like, hey, I have only two customers, but can you give us discount? You know, they never say yes to you. So there is a huge chicken and egg problem that we were trying to solve by just sitting in front of PC. So there is a huge, you know, problem at the moment. So, Taro, break this down to the ground level for Fire Nation. What's one lesson that you learned from this major challenge that you had to overcome? Chicken and egg problem was the biggest problem. How we solve was you have to sell the vision. So it sounds unrealistic, but uh, somehow sometimes you have to really do this. Okay, so until the day you have like a lot of you know perks and discounts, we know that we couldn't like make any money out of this. But somehow we need to get customers to negotiate all the high quality vendors. So what we did was like we approached like we e- email like thousand emails like every week or so to you know potential customers and potential vendors and saying that okay this is something that we have right now that's not something cool but a few years later this will be this awesome this is the vision and we're you know excited for the future so put you but we need your help so please you know sign up right now. I know that it's not something cool right now. But a few months later, this will be much, much more awesome. So trust us, you know, would you please sign up? So we, we didn't have any product that we couldn't make any money, but we believed in a vision. So we sold the vision to the customers that made customers to sign up. So Pandra, you know, one of the public company, that's one of the early customers that signed up even before we had like those awesome perks. Very cool. Pandora, massive company. And then once you sign that one company, you have that social proof. You can go to Hulu, to other people and say, hey, we have Pandora on board. What are you waiting for? You're going to miss out. Exactly. So, you know, once you have the logo, once you have the customer base, you can get a lot of vendors and you can also approach to other potential customers saying that, hey, these users signed up already, just as you mentioned. Great insights, Taro. So, Tara, we're going to move into a different direction now because you shared with us a major challenge and a lesson you learned from that. But we also want to hear about an aha moment when a light bulb really went off. You've obviously talked briefly about a couple that you've had, but share with Fire Nation when you really resonated with an idea. Maybe it was any perk. Maybe it was some point else in your journey. It's your choice. But talk to us about when that light bulb went off and what actions did you take after that to turn it into a success? So I think there is a great moment for us that of 
first day, we were making product. We were making service and product. We were trying to focus, you know, what could make customers happy. And one day, you'll start thinking to this as a business. That means, like, once you have the product, a lot of customers will use. So you have to hire salespeople. You have to hire business development people. You have to hire engineering people. And that's the day you're going to start actually, you know, making business. You have to make sure, you know, you're going to make money more than you're going to spend. You have to make sure this is the day we're going to be profitable. You have to make sure, you know, you have to keep employees happy. You know, one day you cannot do it everything by yourself. You know, you have to have, like, a lot of awesome people around you. So you're going to start making a product first, especially if you're a tech startup. And one day that will change into business. You have to make a business. Otherwise, it's not going to scale. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it's not going to be startup anymore. So that was the moment that I felt early 2012 that, you know, we've been making product, but now we're starting to make business. So let's scale to the stage that we can go, you know, IPO, we can go to huge exit very soon. So Taro, let's bring it forward right now into present time. Let's live in the moment right now. What's Mm -hmm. one thing that's just really exciting you about any park right now? Most exciting part is everyone can be our customers. So right now, even my mom is begging me to say, hey, I'm going to pay you, you know, $5. Can I be into your platform? Because they can receive more than more value than they're going to pay us. And everyone on the street can be our customers. You know, if you go to networking event, every, some, some, of, some of them like know any perk already. But if you talk to new people and explain about it, they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to sign up, you know, today or tomorrow. So that was really awesome. Well, Taro, that is exciting. But now pretend that Entrepreneur on Fire listeners and myself included have never heard of any park. In just 30 seconds or less, how would you explain it to us? Uh, Sure. You know, imagine that you're working at Google. You can access a lot of discounts of high quality perks, like, you know, discounts from cell phone you're paying every month, movie tickets you're paying more than, you know, Google's employees are getting. But like, it's not because they're getting, they're just awesome. It's just because they have so many employees. You know, I don't think it's fair at all. So what we want to do is like we aggregating all the small companies like you into a platform and get access to those high quality perks. So if you sign up any perk, you can access to, you know, hundreds of a lot, a lot of high quality perks, just like Google employees are receiving. You, if you're using AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, you can save more than 10 bucks, 15 bucks every month. Isn't it awesome? Obviously, I'm sold. I mean, it's a win-win situation for everybody involved. I can see why your aha moment happened. I can see how you turned that aha moment into success. I can see why you're excited right now, Taro. Now let's chat 99designs. Why are you looking in that corner for that graphic designer, silly? I already told you, I know just where you can go to connect with over 210,000 designers. 99designs.com slash fire. At 99designs, you'll start out with a complimentary design consultation with their San Francisco design team. Then, you'll be in direct contact with the designers who are working on your project so you can give them your feedback and they'll refine their designs until you're satisfied. 100% money-back guarantee. And check this out. They've had over 100,000 design products pass through their doors. Their team specializes in everything from logos to apparel designs, even mobile app designs. To start your next design project today, visit 99designs.com slash fire and get a $99 power pack of services for free. That's 99designs.com slash fire. And this is a perfect segue into my favorite part of the show, the lightning round. And this is where I get to provide you with a series of questions and you come back at us Fire Nation style with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? (laughs) Sure. Let's go for it. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? The team. So I wanted to start my company. I wanted to start my service uh, two years ago, but I was not confident that if I could do it by myself, the only thing I was missing was my partner, Sunny. That, that was the only thing holding me back. You know, once I found the right partner, I was ready to start my company anytime. What is the best advice you've ever received? Make something people want. That's what I learned from Y Combinator, that you have to make something people want. Otherwise, no one's going to care and no one's going to pay money for it. Love that. And Taro, what's one specific action that listeners can take in the next 24 hours to bring them one step closer to their dreams? Imagine 10 years later, what's going to be happening that's, not hap- that's missing right now and do something to fill the gap. 
Do you have an internet resource, Taro, like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? Yeah, I love Pocket. Uh, Pocket is something that you can save your article to read it later so that you can, uh, in the core time, you can focus on what you're working and you can just read all the articles, all the you know, news, everything later when you have time. Perfect. Well, Fire Nation, you can find the links to this resource and everything that we've mentioned in today's episode by going to entrepreneuronfire.com slash Taro Fukuyama. If you could recommend one book for our listeners, Taro, what would it be? Behind the Cloud by Mark Benioff, a CEO of Salesforce. You can learn how Salesforce became so bigger from the day one. Wow, huge. And just for the listener's benefit, am I nailing your last name or what? <laughs> sure, you sound like my dad, so you're awesome. <laughs> So, Fire Nation, if you haven't already, you can get the audio version of this book or any book that you want for free by going to eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. So, Taro, this next question's my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So, take your time, okay. digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Okay. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Uh, I'd buy a flight ticket to go, you know, somewhere in the world to find the right partner to start your own business again. That is huge. I mean, one great lesson that I've heard over and over again is find that mentor. Find those people that are in that industry that are doing what you want to do. Go to them, add value to what they're doing, and learn from them. Love that so much. And Taro, I've really enjoyed hearing your journey. It's so fascinating to see the inside of Y Combinator and things that are going on in there because it's such a great world. It's really creating so many inspiring entrepreneurial stories and products and services. So thank you for sharing that and give fire nation one parting piece of guidance share how we can find you and then we'll say goodbye yeah find me on twitter.com slash taro underscore f taro underscore f and you can contact me anytime you want and if you had one parting piece of guidance for fire nation what would it be make something people want stop building something that no one is going to use it Make sure you're making something that, you know, people are going to use it. So make something people want. Taro, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation is well aware they can find everything that we've talked about today at eofire.com. Click on that podcast tab and you'll be hanging out right in the archives. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Fire Nation. When I started my journey, I was alone. I had a vision and a whole lot of passion, but no one to support and help me along the way. What I needed was to join a mastermind, and that's exactly what I did. Now, I'm starting our mastermind, Fire Nation Elite. Visit FireNationElite.com to fill out your application and schedule a one-on-one 15-minute chat with me today. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com. Your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.